day. Yeah, coming in loud, loud and clear. Um, thank you, Madam Secretary. I appreciate that uh, that you're with us here today. Um, under your watch, on September 16th, 2022, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service issued a rule that included a ban on traditional ammunition and later took additional steps to further ban traditional am ammunition. What scientific evidence was used to support the 2022 final rule to put a ban on traditional ammunition and subsequent actions? Thank you very much, Congressman, for the question. And um, so I can start out by saying that the Fish and Wildlife Service is taking a measured approach to evaluate the use of lead on refuge areas. Um, committed in 2022-23, Hunt Fish Rule to consider the future of lead use based on the large number of public comments received on the issue. Um, we are, um, of course, it's our job to um, to steward our um, the Fish and Wildlife Service to steward our national wildlife refuges, and um, we are just making sure that we're doing that in a responsible way. So no scientific research is what I think I heard your answer to be. We are, the Fish and Wildlife Service um, is, I mean, yes, we have scientists all over the place studying these things, Congressman, and um, we, and I believe So is there a specific report that you can point this committee to that caused you to take that action? I would be very happy to, uh, get back with the Fish and Wildlife Service and make sure that they can give you the data that they used in evaluating I, this I would issue. be very interested to hear that from uh, an organization that is all about uh, science and, and, and studies. So uh, can we count on your word to provide that data to this committee? We'll be happy to get in touch with your staff as soon as this uh, hearing right. is over, sir. Thank you. All right. I, I appreciate it. Uh, next question, uh, Secretary Holland. Uh, just yes or no. Do you feel that it's prudent to provide funding to localities that intentionally violate federal law? I'm not quite, uh, I don't understand what the question is. Real, real, real simple. Uh, should we provide funding to uh, entities or localities that intentionally violate federal law? Are, are, could you be more specific, sir? Yeah, I sure. Don't know. Do you feel like it's prudent to provide funding to localities that intentionally violate federal law, any federal law? I, I, I couldn't answer that question unless I knew the, issue, the specific issue. I mean, issue there's a whole host of federal about. laws. Would but, you not expect? But, local? of course, we follow the law, Congressman. We, the Department of the Interior follows, follows the law in uh, everything we do. And so would you expect that localities would also follow federal law? I expect every American to follow the laws. All right, thank you for that. So with that, do you feel the Department of Interior should continue to provide grant funds to tribes that legalize marijuana against federal law? It, I suppose it depends, Congressman, on what the grant is used for. If it's a grant to uh, help them uh, combat sea level rise and move uh, I'm, their I'm, my, my question was in regards. My, my question was in in regards to uh, um, legalizing marijuana on on tribal lands. Do you think that we should continue to fund uh, tribal uh, entities that break? federal law by legalizing uh, marijuana. I would imagine if tribes are requesting funds and they fill out the applicable um, uh, paperwork and grant and make their grant proposals that they will be um, reviewed and um, decided upon. In so, so what other federal laws would uh, you be in support of local entities breaking? Congressman, I'm not in support of anyone breaking any laws. Okay, and so you would not, I, I, I think by virtue of that answer, you would not, you would not uh, condone uh, continuing to fund uh, local entities that break federal law. 
And I would also point, um, Congressman, that the uh, Justice Department is the department to handle any issues of law breaking. And um, if we're happy to move to no. point the, in that direction, if you'd like us to. I'd, I'd, I'd just like to interject and uh, l let you know my opinion on, on the topic. Uh, there have been several studies from the National Institute on Drug Abuse that have linked heavy marijuana use to lower income, greater welfare dependence, unemployment, criminal behavior, and lower life satisfaction. Uh, as our nation continues to face an unprecedented drug crisis and mental health crisis, I think it's more imperative than ever that federal agencies commit to upholding uh, federal law and protecting our communities against the hazards that are caused by marijuana production and sale. Um, Next question, I don't, I don't know if I'm on the clock or not, uh, Ms. Mr. Chair. Uh, the President's budget includes almost $32 million in cuts to uh, the payment in lieu of taxes funding and requests to transfer uh, those funds from general provisions which would provide full funding to an appropriations account. Can you explain why? Um. Thank you. Yes, we will. If you give us just one second, please. Um, so I beg your pardon, Congressman, would you just repeat the question? Yes, yeah, certainly. I'd be happy to. The President's budget includes almost $32 million in cuts to PILT funding and requests to transfer PILT from general provisions which would provide full funding to an appropriations account. And I was just curious to know uh, why is that? Um, so I, what I can say is that we remain committed to PILT uh, while balancing the needs in a constrained budget environment. The budget first funds ongoing operations and services. Interior provides directly to the public. And uh, the budget takes reductions in several grant and payment programs, including PILT. The 2025 request will likely be short of the final formula-driven authorized level. Um, it isn't unusual or unprecedented for the request or even CBO scoring to fall short of the final payment. So we'll continue to do the best that we possibly can. Thank, thank you, Madam Secretary. I appreciate that. I'd just also like to interject that the Department of Interior's constant fluctuation in funding accounts and levels means that counties with a large federal acreage, like most of those in my district in Western North Carolina, are continually facing uncertainty and stuck in ongoing funding battles. Uh, I'm particularly interested in reevaluating the complex PILT funding formula and providing greater certainty to communities to better eliminate the negative fiscal impacts that federally owned land creates. Uh, you. Would you commit to working with me on this as we look forward to the 2025 appropriations? Um, we are happy, of course, to be in touch with you, Congressman, if you would like us to. Um, um, and so, yes. All right. We'll do our Thank best. Thank you very much. I do have a couple of other questions, but uh, ma maybe we'll get another round. Thanks. Thank you. And I will tell you that, as is often said, 